We continue our exploration of the Whitsundays, heading into Hill Inlet at the northern end of Whitehaven Beach. The approach is from the southeast in the top half of the tide, heading towards the northern headland before turning in to follow the winding channel. The northern end of Whitehaven Beach creates a sand spit in the entrance of Hill Inlet, providing excellent shelter and a place to nose the boat into the sand. As the tide recedes, vast sandbanks expose which make for interesting walks and exploring. Hill Inlet runs for several kilometres inland and makes for interesting exploring in the dinghy and good fishing for Brim and Trevally. Hill Inlet is a paradise for trailer sailors and other shallow draft boats. Care is needed when wading at night as the water is alive with stingrays. Whitehaven Beach teems with tourists during the middle of the day but otherwise you have it largely to yourself. There are currently widespread blooms of algae in the Whitsundays, colouring the water and the sand pink. The dune vegetation has been stripped bare by the cyclone but is showing signs of recovery. After two wonderful days in Hill Inlet, we head north for Hook Passage and Nara Inlet. On the way north, we pass a very crowded Tongue Bay. Ten years ago, Border Island had the best coral we have ever seen. 
But having taken the full force of Cyclone Debbie, we bypassed it on this trip. Just before we reach Hook Passage, the fishing rod goes off, and after a bit of a fight, we land a nice sized Bonito tuna. Hook Passage is best traversed on an ebb tide in southerly winds as it is prone to strong currents, eddies, and turbulence. The Hook Island Underwater Observatory is a bit of a relic of the past these days. For a short while, the wind picks up and gives us a helping hand towards Nara Inlet. Nara Inlet is a deep, well-protected fjord, providing excellent shelter and opportunities to explore. With a bit of climbing, the surrounding ridges give great views off the inlet. At the end of the inlet is yet another reminder of Cyclone Debbie with a boat driven onto the rocks by the winds and the storm surge. A short track leads up to some caves and overhangs with reminders of Nara Inlet's indigenous past. Up another side arm of the inlet is yet another reminder of the power of Cyclone Debbie with yet another boat left high and dry up on the rock. Time to get back to Naringa and check the forecasts on the shortwave radio. Apart from carrying the dinghy, the Davis provide an easy way of lifting the dinghy outboard off the dinghy and back onto the outboard motor bracket used to carry it. A dinner off a very tasty piece of freshly caught tuna is followed by a superb twilight end to the day. With a forecast of 25 knot winds, it's time to head back to Able Point boat ramp. With a fresh 25 knot wind from a beam, Naringa takes off, reveling in the 1 to 2 metre sea. I'll go, the question is when. In the centre of Whitsunday Passage, the wind hits 30 knots, with Naringa taking it all in her stride.
kiss you again But the governor never called Trade winds are blowing But all too soon we are back at the boat ramp and ready for the long drive home Going somewhere where no one has a care And I know I'll go the question 